Good morning, folks. We've now had three X-Class solar flares in the last day or so. We're going over the last and biggest one today, the technological impacts of each of them, and all the arguments you're going to need to discuss these events with anyone else. You ready? We'll start with the last and biggest one, the X6.3 that erupted last night, the biggest of the solar cycle so far and the largest in six and a half years. It came from the northern sunspots, and when it erupted, the GO-16 went offline. You can see how the data lines go from yellow and purple to blue and red. That's the data flow switching from GOES-16 to GOES-18. Now, the satellite wasn't blown up, nor was the functionality broken. It kept taking data, but its transmitter was blocked out from sending that data back. When the flare ended, it was able to send data again, and now the recovered data is added back to the chart. In addition to the GOES-16 satellite issues, everything at Apple instantly began having trouble. Red lines at the bottom are the down detector failure reports at the time of that flare. WOW Network had issues, and so did both YouTube and Vimeo. Slack was also having issues. LinkedIn as well, and the gaming networks for Final Fantasy, Pokemon, and Diablo. But alas, despite the network and satellite issues, there was no CME. Again, it was a completely confined flare. This is the biggest flare I have ever seen not produce a coronal mass ejection. Now, back to the two previous flares. Yesterday, everyone was discussing whether those flares knocked out the networks that were all over the news. There were twin X-Class events, which also did not produce CMEs. And in the afternoon yesterday, we put out this video arguing for the solar flare causation of the widespread network issues. And in case you didn't know, it was not just the AT&T cellular network. Several cellular networks went down across many areas. So did Reddit and Google. Starlink had issues, as well as both Xfinity and X, Twitter. Several other social media platforms had trouble, so did Microsoft, DoorDash, and Amazon Web Services. And even things like Gmail, Microsoft Teams, and mid-market providers went down at the time. Now, there were so many naysayers, we had to post a pinned comment, and I'd like to go through that here. First and foremost, it was not just cellular, as you saw, and there were impacts outside the United States, but the U.S. got hit the hardest. The largest and most dense networks are always the most vulnerable. That means the USA should usually be near the top of the list of hardest hit when it comes to network issues. We had people asking why it was so selective instead of taking out everything. Well, we would never expect that unless it was a super flare. This is, in fact, as many networks as I've ever seen go down due to a flare ionization only. What ends up taking the hit is a lot like roulette. It's random and based on power, duration, frequency of the disruption, and many more things. Sometimes it's air traffic control, sometimes it's communications infrastructure, sometimes it's gaming, sometimes it's power stations, sometimes it's railroads or satellites. Sometimes it's a combination of those, like the last flare which impacted at least one satellite and several other networks. I doubt a hacking effort would hit all of those different things. It's a lot. And that's what most of the naysayers were arguing. But furthermore, that's quite a risk to take on secondary systems while leaving the power grid and water treatment alone. The hacking thing doesn't make sense to me. Now, the last two items on the list. The ionospheric excitement waves can be very broad, with distance between the peaks, which will leave some areas much more impacted than others. And the ionospheric impact is, in fact, not just about which side of the Earth is facing the sun. It goes global in minutes. You may recall these key papers and how they describe the disruption to the ionosphere. The whole ionosphere is instant, light speed and simultaneously impacting the entire globe. It is an electrified system. You can't just electrically impact one piece of it. In fact, the only thing that matters for which part is facing the sun is the high frequency radio blackouts. That does follow which side of the earth is facing the sun, but the total ionosphere disruption and global electric circuit impact does not. I spoke to about 70 people in the industry yesterday and most agreed this was almost certainly the sun, especially when the last one took out other networks in the GO-16 satellite. Some of the experts came by the channel to comment, didn't even have to call them. Luckily, none of the flares sent plasma bursts towards the earth. No CMEs. If you plan on discussing this topic with anyone today, make sure you are armed with the information in this video. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We're watching our star closely for more today. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.